now we get to talk about something that's just like, oh, we have to talk to people in this business. You know, some people get so nervous or, oh, do I have to talk to people? And here's the thing, guys, is you've got to have a lot of fun. This is actually my favorite part. I love talking to people. I can literally, you can ask my man here, can I not go? I can get in a conversation with anybody, anywhere, anytime. She can. It, it, I just, you, you meet people everywhere you go, right? And so the first thing, I mean, we're just going to dive right in. Or I'm just going to dive right in. Is that cool? You're going to dive right I'm in. I'm going to dive right in because the first thing I would say is when you're approaching people, you're going to prospect, you're going to try to recruit people. It's just a process. And the first thing you have to do is just make up your mind to do it. There are some days where, you know, it's, it's gloomy outside or rainy and just gray skies. And maybe you just don't want to talk to anybody that day. We've actually been out and like, okay, today is our date night. We're not going to talk to anybody. And then somebody's super sharp. Who are we not to say anything to those people, right? We, we've been there. I mean, you'd agree with me. We're just like, okay, it's our date night. We're not going to say anything. But if they're super sharp and we get in a conversation, who are we not to say anything to them when they have kids that they might want to stay home with? Who are we not to say anything to take away somebody's college education or somebody's early retirement? Kind of like you guys believe in the product, which Dr. Cheryl was amazing last week. Oh, she's incredible. She's incredible. But if you guys believe in the product so, so much, what if somebody came up to you and said... Well, just look at... I mean, we know that that's true. Look at how many testimonials were oh. on the Facebook page. If you did not take some time to go wow. through and read all of the testimonials, I'm point. telling you, that will be worth its weight in gold by itself. By itself. So therefore, you can be thinking of more people that fit that testimonial that you can now go bless and really have confidence in blessing them, knowing that if it helps somebody else, and we can't, we're not here to treat or diagnose anything. We can't say anything's going to cure anything, and, and so be careful with your verbiage. But the reality is, is that if it helps someone else, how, why would it not benefit somehow? Yes. Benefit another person that has something similar going on. That's if so we don't true. try, then they're going to stay the same. That's so so true. And so after reading all of those testimonies, you guys. So many of you have gotten such great results on the product, no matter what product it was. The products work. And so what if somebody came up to you and said, oh, that OPC doesn't work. You're full of baloney. That OPC doesn't work. You're crazy. Would you stop taking the OPC? No. You know, what, what if they said, oh, you know, that's just snake oil or whatever. Would you stop taking it and let your pain come back or let your psoriasis come back or your migraine headaches or whatever it might be? Would you just stop taking the product and go cry? No, right? But so you have the belief in the products, but here's the thing. If you guys had the same belief in the business and what it can truly offer somebody, you guys would all be directors by now. And so well, that's- Well, some of them are brand new. In the so moment, we'll let you off the hook if you're brand new. Shouldn't be true. a director yet. But you guys but get my point is that if your belief level in the company and yourself is so high, don't let anybody else take away what you're working towards. Don't let anybody else steal your dreams. And so um, you guys have to make up your mind to do it, whether you just put that audio on in the shower in the morning. There's days we didn't want to, but I put in, you know, Dave and Stacy Whited, or I put in Elizabeth Weber, or I put in Jim Winkler before I pick up the phone or whatever it is. You have to get your mind right because, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago, is so, so important. And you just have to make up your mind to do it. So, you know, how many of you guys out there over the age of 24, maybe you make over $12,000 a year, you know, maybe um, you have done other businesses before or own a business. You guys realize that I personally, I was so nervous, very, very nervous to talk to any of you guys because I was an MCI telemarketer. That's what I was doing. So I was a brand new mom making like $12,000 a year. How am I supposed to teach all of you guys how to make six figures? You know, Trini had a little personal growth I had to go through. Yeah. We all did. Both of us. Diamond in the rough. Uh, totally rough. 
totally rough. Yeah, really we were, rough, we were right? Really, really, really rough. But I got this someone, someone super sharp. I want you to come show them called. I'm like, okay, <laughs> uh, we got this. But mentally, I'm going, oh crap. But you have to like, prepare yourself. Yeah. It's just kind of like when you're at the restaurant or you're out for breakfast on a Sunday morning after church, and you're going around and they serve coffee. Would you like more? Would you like some coffee? You know, sure. Would you like some coffee? Sure. Would you like some coffee? If somebody's like, no, I don't want you. It's like, you don't want my coffee? Oh my gosh. You know, when I was switching no, people no, no, no. long distance service, if they said no, they didn't want to switch their long distance. I didn't take it personally. They just didn't want my phone service. Right. And so here's the thing. You cannot say the wrong thing to the right person. And, and we talked last week where you don't just set out there just to find any two. It's like, oh my gosh, I got to get my two people. I got to get my two people. This business, if you opened up a boutique, if you opened up your own office space, if you opened up a franchise, you're not going to just go bring your neighbor on board to help you manage your, your store or, you know, maybe your cousin Billy Bob. You're going to sort through a lot of people to find the best key managers. Wouldn't you agree? I would. Okay. So what are you laughing for? Well, because you said Billy Bob. What's wrong with Billy Bob? Oh, okay. I, I have some pers Nothing personal. Better total Billy Bob. I'm like, why are you laughing? I even have those Billy Bob keys back. But the, the point is, you guys, is that you're going to sort through people. We don't just sort out there just to get two. We sort through a number of people. It could be 300 people. It could be 50 people. So you guys can find the best two. That's exactly what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. Because we do want the best two. You want to, you got to work with these people. Do you like them? Do they like you? And can we help them find something that they cannot get with what they're currently doing? And so I love that because our job, you guys, is to just offer it to them. We're going to get them the information. What they do with it is up to them. It's up to God. And we don't get to choose, right? And so I heard something just a couple weeks ago where it's like, you can't take on that responsibility to to you you can only serve you can only do your very very best but you can't take that responsibility on what a huge responsibility it is to take on where is everybody has to do market america right so you just give them information and um, and they're coming up with their own issues they're coming up with their own life experiences to make a judgment call whether this is right for them or if it's not right for them but you don't need their approval to get you where you need to be. I so agree. Don't let messed up people totally mess you up, right? And where you're going and where you're headed because this is on you, right? This is your goals. This is your dreams. We're cheering you on. We're here to high five you. We're here because we believe in you. So you need to believe in you before you even talk to anybody. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, if someone is not, interested or someone is kind of just blowing us off or, or whatever Trin and I have to assume they are messed up no they're I mean, not messed up yeah, well kind of but they I mean kind of look in, like in JR end, says go die in the back of your head or something yeah, in the back of your head but and some people will take that part of the training and yeah. literally say it to somebody so it's like well I'm just not interested in it. well go die it is like he doesn't mean literally say that to somebody but mentally they're not going to take up space in his head is what he's trying to say but Trin and I Literally, would think who doesn't want to save money and have awesome quality products? I mean, our BV brand of products, oh. okay, are some of the most amazing products on planet Earth. And when you talk about quality and price, they're second to none. And I know you guys know this already. However, if I'm offering it to someone and they're not interested and they don't want to take a sample pack or nothing, then I have to assume something else is going on deeper mm -hmm. than what I'm aware of. And that's really the caveat to it. How am I going to take that person's rejection or that person saying no. You know, we seen a, 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 I seen a skit a couple of weeks ago and it was, it was rather graphic where the person literally, it was on Twitter and the person said to someone, like, like she was explaining something and, and, the, and the guy was offended by what she was sharing and so he called her a bad name. It was probably the worst name you could call a woman. And she literally responded as if to say, well, clearly something else is going on in this guy's life. And she literally put her heart out there and dug deeper with this guy. It's nice thing you know, the thread goes on and on and on. And she gets to the root of what was going on. And they took a, you know, in a private message and all this. And it was, it was a wonderful 
situation that came out of something she could have been totally combative and upset and like, you're not going to say that to me and I'm coming back at you. And it's sometimes what I see people do with the business is we get so passionate about the business that we're like over the top on some people. And if they don't get it, we want to literally, you know, if, if, I, if I beat them over the head, then they're going to get it. You know, and, and the reality is, is that we have to look at, if you learned anything from the Secrets of the Millionaire of Mind book, hopefully everybody realizes that every single one of us has a past. Every single one of us is doing the best job we can at the time in our life, okay, based on how we were raised, past programming, and all of this stuff. And now we're trying to make informed decisions. And so everybody's bringing baggage with them to the situation when you finally come around and you approach them. And now they're going to respond with the baggage they're carrying. So kind of look at it through that perspective, which could probably be that set of glasses would be their perspective, not just your perspective and what you're trying to hammer across. Absolutely. And so, again, you never want to base your goals or your future on anybody else's timing. You just sort through the people. And just because you might get a no or it's not the right time, it does not mean that it's a no forever. 20 years in this business, you know, it, it, people oh. always will come back to you. How is it going? Um, you know, put them on a re-entry or another leg later or anything like that. I mean, it, it's just a matter of timing. Timing has to be right too. And so when you do approach people, we've always lived by this. You cannot say the wrong thing to the right person. But if you don't And if there's a them, wrong person, yeah. you can't say the right thing. Exactly. That's right. a good point too. Yeah. I mean, because if they're wrong and you're trying to beat them over the head again and thinking, man, if they only knew this, if they only knew. But maybe was, if I explain the ingredients a little bit better. No, no. They really need to know the name. If they knew it was oligomeric proanthocyanin. Oh, yeah, then, then, then they would do it. That's what Dr. Cheryl has on me. No. That's what I've been leaving off of my approach. <laughs> you guys, here's the thing. is that you just have to have fun. You have to make up your mind to do it. Just if you don't approach them, you guys, it's a no anyway. That's you guys right. get this? So you just have to have a good time with it. So, um, you know, no, who, who can you bless today? So you're going to talk about some approaches. That's the attitude. Yes. Is who can I bless blessed today? Yes. And so what happens is you got to think of the world that we live in, right? It's it's much like this next slide, okay? Who wants change? And then, you know, everybody is like, oh, yeah. And then it's like, okay, who wants to change? I love this. And everybody puts their head down. And it's ultimately that's the world that we live in is that you're trying to identify those people that raise their hand for bold questions. That's what we're looking for. Yes. Who's really wanting to change? I remember when I started in the business years ago, my dad said to me, my dad's been in sales, you know, his whole life pretty much. And he said to me, he says, your biggest obstacle, Colin, is going to be finding those individuals who are open for change versus those individuals who want to talk a great game, but ultimately want someone else to do that heavy lifting. They want to talk about what other people should be doing, what everybody else is doing wrong. OK, but they're not willing to put the mirror up in their own face and say, I'm going to be part of the solution, because if I'm not part of the solution, then by default, I'm part of the problem. If I'm not willing to step forward and be part of the solution. And so that's what we do. We are creative problem solvers. That's what we do. And so there's two kinds of major approaches that we use in the business. One is direct and, and one is the evaluation approach. So those are the two main ones. And Trent and I primarily use the evaluation approach uh, because it's easier to work through people's people and versus focusing on that person thinking they would be great in the business. But what we've learned is sometimes people have way more influence than we had when we started with the business. So right now we're working with some professional business owners. And even though we approach them based on the evaluation approach, because we knew what? We knew they knew a lot of people we didn't know. The only question is, is their database of people going to trust and respect them? And only time will tell as they lead us to some people. And the reality is they did. We could go into a meeting, you guys, and sit down, and the person would literally just say, well, it really doesn't matter exactly what you have to share with me here today, because if they're doing it, I'm in. Well, that was, that was more of the direct approach. They basically called the person and said, get over here. Right. I have something that's hot, okay? And I'm doing this with or without you. 
And that was the approach. And says, okay, I'm coming. And this person is also a very high level professional. Because and of they their make, enthusiasm. It's super excited. But here's the other thing too, is, 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 is sometimes like attracts like. Mm -hmm. So successful people hang out with what? Other successful people. And so that's where the analogy comes up, where it's like the rich get richer. And it's like, well, if they're all hanging out, and if we're all hanging out, and, and, and we're all hanging out with you guys, and we want you to come with us, well, then you're on that freeway of great things. You're up in the odds that then all of a sudden more money comes your way because it's what you can do with that money to bless other people as the tool, right? In the end, though, as the rich get richer, it's because they link arms with each other and say, what are you investing in? What are you doing? If you come across something that's smoking hot, you better call me. This is what they say to each other, see? And until you get into that circle, you're, be, you're, you're literally like banging on the door of people who need the business that, look, look, we want to bless everybody who's willing to do the work. No matter someone's status or how much they've earned or what success they've had in their life. But the reality is, is that everybody's bringing baggage to the table. Yeah. So we're just trying to recognize that based on the two approaches. And so if someone's super sharp and they're calling somebody up and they want to be more direct with that person, okay, great. That works for them, but that may not work for you. You may need to call the person and just focus on what they're going to be the conduit that's going to lead us to the people that we need to talk to because every person, you know, knows two executive coordinators that would blow this thing out right now. Definitely. Okay. And every single person, you know, could lead you to 10, 20, 30 new customers. This is the way you need to be thinking is, those people are going to lead us to the people. And if we can make it somehow a win-win, because they're asking themselves, Trinity, they're like, well, what's in it for me? Yes, they are. That's where you need to come up with, here's what's in it for you. Yeah. And, and so hey, that could be a cup of coffee. That could be, you know, we could go out for dinner, whatever it might be. But I'm going to put them in the, into the environment to where I can explain or give them some information in order for them to realize that this is why they want to lead me to some more people. Yep, yep. In the business or products. Absolutely. And so, again, going back to the, the direct approach, and we have the evaluation approach, and then the retail approach as well as pretty much the three main ones. But the direct approach, you guys, we all have those friends or your sister, your brother, where you can call them up, your best friend from high school, and go, hey, listen, I came across something. I need, I'm coming over. You know, I need you to sit down, shut your trap, and listen to me for an hour. I got something to show you. And we all have that relationship where we could do that, right? But that doesn't work so well on just your coworkers or some other people. But sometimes you have that camaraderie with somebody and that history with somebody that you can. That's more of a direct approach. But on the flip side, if you go, ex like you were talking about, so you're going to talk through them because they know a couple good executive coordinators. If you go after people and give them a call, hey, I got this amazing business opportunity. I don't think we use that word very much. I, I, I wouldn't suggest sure it, but don't. you know, I have this amazing business opportunity for you. It's just incredible. You'd be perfect for my business. What do they automatically do, right? So we learned this from Dave and Stacy a long time ago, but if, you, if I push on Colin's hand automatically, what is he gonna do? He's gonna resist me. And then they see you up oh, Amway lady come in or the Amway guys come in and they're going to resist and back it up. But if you go after them specifically, that's what their normal reaction is going to be. But if you go at them where it's, it's mainly, Hey, you know, I've come across something. I've looked at it. I'm super excited about it. I trust the person that shared it with me. I've looked at it a few different times. That's a big one right there. I cannot find I trust, a way. I respect that I can't make any, I can't find a way where I can't make any money with it. Would you do me a favor? And I need another set of eyes on this thing. Would you do me a favor, evaluate it for me and point me in the right direction. You might know somebody that I need to talk with. You'd, you'd be open to helping me out a little bit, right? And then you shake your head like this. And then they're automatically going to say, sure, sure. They might say, well, what is it? Okay, that's a logical question. So you're going to have your answer to what is it? Kind of like a cross between QVC, home shopping, and Amazon, but you get cash back. The whole internet franchising system, I'm super excited about it. I would, when, when is a good time where we can sit down? And you bring it right back to the appointment. As short as you can go on the response and then bring it back to the appointment or yes. back to asking a question. 
Yes. Questions can be the answer sometimes, but I still want to address the question that they're asking because if I don't address the question, then it looks like I'm avoiding their question. Mm. So, you know, what is it? Well, it's a, it's an unfranchised business. Have you, so I answered, have you ever heard of it? And nine times out of 10, they say, no, I've never heard of it. I say, awesome, man. We're really exploding into the area. Would love to get together with you, buy a cup of coffee, share with you what we're doing, what we're looking for. And I guarantee, everybody wants a guarantee, guys. I guarantee you will know who I would need to talk to you in this area. See? Mm-hmm. And that's the key to that approach. Yep. The same thing in the fast track uh, audios and everything that JR has done to build this company and why. And you're going to listen to it this week, too, and, and him being a, a master approacher, a master recruiter is because he's never looking at the person as I'm going to get them in, but he knows that that person knows a whole bunch of people, two to 500 people JR doesn't know. And the better Trinity and I got at this, the faster we grew. And that's really the the truth right there. We didn't just focus on one or two people. We didn't put a few people in the bean jar like JR does with that and just shake it, shake it, shake shake it, 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 until they're they're so irritated with us, right? We just talked to a lot of people to then find the right people. And we also did make it fun. I think Nikki Forbes on here put, take the business seriously, but remain lighthearted and have fun. And that's one thing we for sure have done is just have fun with it. Because sometimes I think people go so serious. Sure. We are the unfranchised. We are so different and we are so structured and uniform. And you you get so serious, so tense. Interesting enough, just, just came up for me. But, uh, um, and this happens to me, I, I apologize, I'm a little ADD, but, and, and yes, I know we got a product for that, I take it, but the, the deal is, uh, one, of the, one of the shows, Trin and I are always looking for shows that are educational and can help our kids, because, you know, it's like, man, you know, kids aren't always necessarily going to listen to us, so one of the recent shows that we found is uh, Sell It Like Sirhan. Sell It Like Sirhan, okay, Ryan Sirhan is one of the top real estate brokers in New York City, yes. all right? In New York City. Now, this, this, I mean, he's, he is a, he's kind of a clown, all right, but he also knows his stuff. So he's the perfect combination of being very serious when he needs to be, but also goofing around when he can. But what happens is they, they created this reality show off of him of selling like a certain, and he goes in and he helps people sell. So he just went into this dress shop and he was teaching this lady who is horrible at selling dresses, who, by the way, was an attorney and got tired of being an attorney and wanted to do something different. She was looking. I mean, if somebody would approach her with Market America, she would have been in. All right, That's true. You know yeah. you're on a tangent, right, baby? I, I do know. And so, okay. and so, and I'm going to keep going. So here's what happens. Ryan Serhan goes in there, and he talks to her about what, what she needs to do. But if you watch an episode of this or two episodes of it, you guys, and you look at yourself in the mirror and say, how does what Ryan is teaching these people apply to what we do with Market America? Everything he teaches applies. It's very true. Every single thing he's teaching applies to what we do. And yet we think it's so different. Yeah. And like, oh, are you in one of those businesses where you sell stuff? And it's like, uh, yes, yes. Because yeah. why? That's legal. Um, are you in a business where you have to go recruit people? And I'm like, yeah, well, anybody who owns a business recruits people to work at their business in order for their business to become successful, right? And what is a business hoping, business owner hoping? To recruit people into their business yep. that then can run the business without the business owner being needed. But the cha- number one challenge for business owners is what? Finding ambitious and right people that will show up and treat it like it's their business when it's really his or her business. And, and so they have to high turnover. That's their number one complaint is employees. Yep. And he does think about this non like literally we record the show and we sit down at like 1030 at night and I'm he's like, analyzing. I got to tell the fast track about this. Like he's always his brain just this is how it works, okay? So so it's all it's all it's a well, great analogy and it is a great show. Well, and it's funny too because on, on one of the shows he like he this one, one guy's like all right look, she, he, or this one gal he's like I gotta teach you how to prospect. Yep. And it's of course true. I'm going wait a minute no he he didn't just say that did he because we only say that in market America that's right. only market America we prospect. That's so true. He's like no you need to get great at talking to people and get in conversations and prospect people and I'm going. He's a real estate broker. That's they don't right. do real estate too, do they? Which I just think it's hilarious. It, it is. It's a great show. But here's the here's the scoop, guys, is that if you get in a conversation, right, with different people, and would you go through another 50 people to find, and 50 people, okay, that's a lot. Oh, my gosh. Well, you know what? If you're going to take the next two to three years, would you go through another 50 people? Would you go through another 500 people? 
if you're going to find another Elizabeth Weber, right? If oh, you're yeah. going to find another, you know, uh, Dr. Cheryl, if you're going to find another Barb Bolt, if you're going to find another Jackie Birchman or Jackie Blasco or Eric Stephen Drew Sandy. or I mean, Stephen Sandy and the Eric Drew or Rob Sandry. I'd like, I mean, so come on. Wouldn't you go through would. more people? Uh, absolutely. The successful people do what the unsuccessful people are not willing to do. 100%. And again, stepping out of your comfort zone. It's just the art of conversation. And that's really, truly what this is about. So if you respect somebody and you're asking them for their help, you compliment them, you guys. I really respect you as a business owner. I know that you have a couple and multiple businesses here in the area. I've come across something that made me think of you. I'm really excited about it. I've looked at it. Trust the person who can't, you know, trust the person that shared it with me. I can't find a way where I can't make money with it. And I know that you're a successful business owner. I would love for you to evaluate this business for me. And it might be right for you. If not, that's okay. But you're going to know exactly who I need to talk to. You'd be open to helping me out a little bit, right? That's why I always end like this. Don't I? You do. I always do. Always. Yep. And, and so that's the evaluation approach. You got the direct approach. And then, of course, the retail approach. Well, the retail approach is the same. The retail Have approach is the done. same as the business because you're evaluating. You ask them to evaluate the product. Right? You're going to do the daily essential packets and yes. whatever you're handing out, you're going to have to evaluate the trim key, evaluate the information, or you're going to be very direct with someone. Hey, you mentioned that you have XYZ going on, or you look at their health survey, which is why I love the health survey. The only people that complain, you guys, or would have an objection against the price of one of our products is because we didn't collect data on them first. Yep. Yep. That, it's as simple as that. Because if they have something going on, we can answer a problem that they have going on and get them That's a good. better quality of life, all right? Then the, the, the price doesn't even matter. And it, you can't get into a price war with somebody unless you're comparing like our calcium to someone else's calcium or our multi with someone else's multi. And again, in those situations, we win all day long on price and quality. Or when you can't get into a comparison with like our daily essential you know, packets because there's nothing comparable in the marketplace. And that's where you got to up your, your level of awareness by getting the health survey filled out, then finding out what they have going on. But also most importantly on health survey, what do their friends and family have going on? Because mm -hmm. when we bless this Power one person possible. with the products, okay, and we help them, then what are the odds are going to lead us to some other people we can bless mm -hmm. with the products? So you can be direct with somebody if you know they already have some ailments or some things going on, or you can be more indirect if you just want them to test the product out. Maybe you're going to give them one of our awake shots. You know, here, just you know, take this instead of that Red Bull you're drinking. Retail to recruit. And half your job is done, right? They already believe in the product. So that's just a win-win. So I have some funny stories to share. Because going through your names list, right, that, that's obviously the first step. It's your warm market. But, um, you know, there have been some times I'm going to share there's been some times where you're just a little frustrated and it's not going as fast as you want it to go. Have you ever been there? Oh, never. Never in 20 years, never. right? But, you know, it, and I can think of a time where um, I, it was, again, one of those days and my babies were crying all day. I was just a little frustrated. I said things like executive coordinator and we're just sitting there. It's not going fast enough. And I was whining on the phone to Stacy Whited, who is um, one of our mentors and business partners. And so I'm just kind of complaining and Stacy's listening to me for probably about 10 minutes or so. And she's just, you know, she's like, man, if you didn't have Market America, then I would be worried about your trend, but you found it. So that's a good thing. And I'm like, yeah, Stacy, <clears throat> but, and I'm whining for another five minutes and she's listening to me. And so probably after about 15 minutes, she just says, short and sweet, she says, well, I'll tell you what, when I started prospecting, that's when my business started to take off. And then I kept on whining. And I, I didn't even get it. I was just like, oh, yeah, Stacy, uh, you, you can go ahead and prospect. You're making money, right? That, I didn't get it. That's, that means learner. <laughs> learner. It wasn't that at the time, learner. let me tell you. So anyway... I, I, I didn't even get it at the time, but a couple weeks go by, and I actually was in Walmart. This is like years ago, probably like 17 years ago, 18 years ago. I'm in Walmart, and uh, our son's little, like he's like in the car, 
seat kind of like in, in the cart where you're sitting in the front and all that stuff. And I'm literally going through the checkout line, you guys. And I hear this, the cashier sit there and she literally goes like this. She goes, oh my gosh, I cannot, I cannot wait to get off of work. I'm so sick and tired of this job. I've got to find something else or I'm just going to die. <laughs> and I remember sitting there going, first instinct was like, okay. I said to myself, I was just like, please don't cry. Please don't cry. Please don't cry. But then in my own head, I'm going, if I don't say something now, I'm never, we're never going to make a dime in this business. Like never. I've got to say something. Guys, literally, I don't remember what I said. I don't remember the conversation, but I did get the name and number. I don't even remember what I said, but just write down your name and number and I'll give you a call. And I did. We called. I don't even think we booked the appointment. I don't even think anything came of it, but I'll tell you what, I knew that if I did it once, I could do it again, and I could do it again, and I could do it again, right? And so when you can prospect, really, you will never, ever, ever, ever run out of names. Do you guys get that? There are so many people out there looking for a better way. And so it's really about the art of conversation. It's really about just communicating just like you do you don't want to make it weird you just compliment them hey I love your shirt you know or get in conversation oh is this your store oh no you're the manager here you know and uh, no not really I go oh you just do all the work for the manager right or you know oh how long have you been working here oh you know 10 years oh you must really love it you would be shocked at what people say no not really you know and I'll just get in a conversation no matter what it is, I always say, let me ask you a question. If I could honestly show you a way where you can make an extra $1,500 a month, let alone a week, without giving up what you're doing here at the store, would you take advantage of that? And then I just shut up and let them say yes or no. Now, in other words, are you ambitious or are you not? I've had people go, Psh, no. And I've fumbled over my words. I have like walked away going, man, I really screwed that one up. Okay. But guess what? <laughs> the next person doesn't know. And I get up just like riding a bike. You go do it again. But the more you do it, the stronger you'll get. Okay. And so I literally, and if I think it's kind of a, you know, we've been to dinner, we've been, you know, out no matter where I go, let me ask you, I'll just kind of, you know, Hey, I, I, this, I know that we just met like two minutes ago, but you've got a great personality. Let me ask you a question. If I could honestly show you a way where you could make an extra $1,500 a month, let alone a week, I might say six figures if they're a health professional, but I might customize it a little bit, an extra $300 a week if somebody is a server and a little bit younger. Because if I throw out six figures to somebody that might be a little bit younger, that's way, oh, scam. They can't even comprehend that. Do you guys get that? Mm -hmm. So you just, you know, $1,500 a month, let alone a week without giving up what you're doing here, would you take advantage of that? And, you know, shot in the dark. Let me ask you a question. That question is from straight from Elizabeth Weber, um, Getting Started Guide, and right there. I mean, it's made us a lot, a lot of money. I mean, you're either in the rhythm of doing it or you're not, you guys. I'd like to tell you that you just roll out of bed one day and you're used to doing it, but that's not that's not the case. It truly, truly is just like riding a bike or you showing up for that first day at a new job and you're a little bit nervous and like, can I do it? And, and, and what is my new job going to require me to do? Oh, I think I got this, but man, I hope everybody's nice. And your brain goes through a thousand different, you know, scenarios, 99% uh, of which never happen. And are not true. That's true. But but our mind is the biggest soap opera uh, drama writer on planet Earth, and so that's its job, and that's what it does, right? So in the end, though, I remember we were a national supervising coordinator, uh, and I we we started building again. We're going to go director, and I showed up to a moving up seminar, and on the way there, and we had a whole group of people going to the uh, moving up seminar, and Kevin Buckman was the one uh, you know teaching at that one. He was the main trainer. And I can remember getting there. And on the way there, there was a guy on the plane. I started talking to him. I fumbled all over it. I mean, it was a disaster. Why? Because I hadn't, I hadn't really talked about the business for a while. I mean, it had probably been a couple of years um, that, that we were just, you know, coaching the kids and, you know, not necessarily dig, uh, digging in the trenches. 
and we weren't in the rhythm of talking to business. I fumbled all over it. I get on the boat and Kevin and I were talking and we're laughing about it. And I'm just like, but you got to laugh about it. Cause in the end it's an awareness. I said, man, I guess I got to start practicing again. And it doesn't matter yeah. how much money you earn with the company or where you're at in your life. You guys, the reality is you're either going to practice and it's a learnable skill that you're going to practice and get better at, mm -hmm. or, or you're not. And, and what I would say to you is don't have 15 different approaches. Practice one, get great right. at it, because that's all we've done as well. That's really, really good. And and you hit it on the nose. Just practice and get back out there and do it again and get back out there and do it again. This whole business, you guys, and you've heard me say this before, and you'll hear me say it again, 90% posture and enthusiasm and 10% knowledge, right? And so I always tell people, if, if somebody's a little bit hesitant, well, you know, well, what is it? Tell me or what is it? You know, But you know what? Write down your name and number. I'll get, you know, maybe we could have a Starbucks or something. I'll give you a call. It might be something right for you. If not, that's okay. But you know what? It doesn't hurt to evaluate everything. You know, we'll have some coffee. We'll have a good time. I'll give you a buzz. And people will just automatically write down their name and number. We don't give out cards or anything because they're not going to call you. You always want to get their name and their phone number and give them a call to book it. So, um, and then also have fun with other business partners. This is one of our favorite things as well. In the first time this happened to me, I was sitting in at a basic five years ago, and there's a nurse where she was like an adult, like she was like 30, you know, and, and totally, she had made it in life, you know, she was, she was just, her name was Connie. And we were at a basic five, and they're talking about prospecting, and Connie looks at me, and she just says, Trinity, maybe you and I can go to the mall or something, and like, you can show me how to prospect. And I literally was like, Sure, you know, I had no idea what I was doing, but we made the appointment. <laughs> we went and we we're just excited and went and got a whole bunch of names. You can partner up with somebody. I've done that and you've done that. We've had a good time. We do it with each other. And, you know, Sandy Schomburg, I always tell this story. Sandy, um, somebody on our team, and we went prospecting a few different times and nothing would happen. I'd get the names, I'd show her how to do it. And then she's like, okay, great. Let's do it again next week. Okay, great. We go out and I get some more names and Sandy, you can do this too. She wouldn't get any names. And like the third time we did it, literally, she's so in her head about it. She's so nervous. And the mall is like shutting down. She's checking out at the register, trying to get a gift for like her sister's bridal something. And, and she's, the lights are going off. They're locking the doors in the mall. And I'm like, Sandy, say something get get it get the name you know <laughs> to poke at her and she wouldn't do that she grabbed the bag she starts turning around I looked at her I go Sandy this lady's got a great personality she'd be perfect for your business and I walked away and then of course the lady says well what do you do we do this all the time because yeah. again if I approach the server if we're out for dinner say it's a server at the restaurant and I approach that server You'd be, you've got a great personality. You'd be perfect for my business, or you don't want to pounce on them. Say, Colin, this guy, he's got a great personality. He'd be great for your business. And I just throw it to Colin. And that, you know, your famous line, me and dude, you got to talk to my wife. That's it. You know? Yeah, I know a lady. You I know, know that's lady. my famous line. <laughs> but, but the reality, too, is if you're out doing something, you guys, especially out for dinner or something like that, it's a great place to practice. Uh, servers are going to be super nice to you all the time, most of the time, and they're going to give you their name and number pretty much no matter what, because um, they're taught to do that, because um, then you're going to give them a bigger tip. Uh, so, because they're taught to do that, and you can practice in that environment, it gets you more confident, but the tip stays the same, just so you know, like, if you haven't learned that lesson, If they're will. a good server, we'll tip them. If, and well, if they're not, we, we'll, we'll tip them. them. Right, more higher based on we think they're going to be with us. Very or true. Or they'd be great in the business. We know because we, we've learned our lesson. We've learned our lesson. Yeah, we've learned. Yeah. And, and so, and then the other thing is, if you're going to do that, wait towards the end. Like you build rapport great throughout time. the dinner, and then at the end, right before when you're getting the bill and you're ready to walk out, kind of thing. That's when you get their name and number, and that's when you make your final approach. Yep, absolutely. That's it. Yeah, because if you do it earlier on, then it kind of make it can make the rest of it a little bit awkward, right? So, and they come back and they're asking five thousand more questions, and you're like. Gosh, I don't want to answer so many questions. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because you you asked them for their information too early and gave too much information too early yeah. in the conversation. 
So no matter what I do, if I'm out, if, if it's if it's happy hour and I'm gonna be, go go get my iced tea and I meet some some suits at a at a you know at a local hotel bar area, let's say, all right, everybody's getting some more d'oeuvres and, and something to drink or something. You sit down, you make a conversation, and then next thing you know, it's just like, hey, listen, I gotta get going. But and then you approach, you just do everything that we've already been teaching right here. I don't want to keep point. going over it for the sake of time, but the reality is that. You, you got to get out on that freeway of meeting people and where are the sharp people at is where I would go. And it's everywhere you go. Every single where I could go and talk to the manager of the grocery store who uh, about, you know, my receipts and he's the manager, sharp guy. And I said, you know what? This is totally shot in the dark, but you obviously are very good at what you do. How long have you been the manager here? My husband is expanding an unfranchised business here in the area. He's looking for a couple of really sharp key people. You, I would love to get your name and number. He needs, you need to meet with my husband. Well, what is it? And then I do my answer to what is it. And then, you know what? Write down your name and number. I'll have him give you a call. And they do, right? It doesn't have to be your spouse. It could be your business partner. You would be excellent for my friend Eric's business. He's expanding out here in Sarasota. He's super sharp, but he's looking for some really key people, and you, you should meet with him. You know, I mean, it, you could just pass it off. It's kind of called the chicken way, right, guys? The chicken way. So you just have a good time with it. And the most important thing is just say something, because if you don't, it's a no anyway. Right, babe? It's a no anyways. And we have a good time. That's it. That's, That's it. it. And some of you are asking for a copy of the script. You know, uh, those of you asking for a copy of the script, you can watch. Uh, this video as many times as you want um, you know over the next couple of days for free and write down what Trinity was already sharing however first thing I want you to do is go back and listen to the YouTube clip uh, the video uh, Jim Winkler uh, lose the scripts make the calls all right because sometimes we just got to get out of our head keep it simple let it just flow but less is more and that's really the key okay sure sure I wonder if I do have it written I'm trying to think if I even have it written but we've got definitely practiced it over and over and over and there's nothing wrong with having a phone script. Nobody can see you're reading anything when it's right by your phone. Like they can't. You got something that. to fall back on. It's great sure. to have it there in case you kind of get you fumble it a little bit or you get a little bit tongue tied. Uh, but the key here again is practice. See, when emotions go up, intelligence go down, mm -hmm. and that's scientifically proven. So the only way to keep intelligence up and and, and it is to practice. It's the only way to do it. I'm just telling. There's no way to avoid practicing which is looking you know at your camera and your computer and, and talking into it as if you're talking to somebody on the phone or face to face or something and the more you practice it the better you're going to get at it and the better you get at it means when emotions go up and they will intelligence won't go down because you practice so many times that piece of cake i've got this and i love this slide go for it broadcast this can we see it if you don't, you're telling yourself that not stepping out of your comfort zone, your fear is more important to you than your reason why. You staying in your little box of your comfort zone is more important to you than your future, than you making six figures. If you get money out of the way, then you can truly do the things that God put you on the earth to do. You got to go out there, you got to change lives. And that's what it's all about, you guys, changing lives and, and believing enough in yourself to know that you want to position yourself to change more lives and think of yourself of where you want to be. And if you see yourself at the top here, first, second, and third place, you know, the reality is that in life, whether we like it or not, some are going to rise up and others are going to stay inside their comfort zone. But what people don't see is all of the sacrifice, all of the challenges, all of the overcoming challenges, uh, the passion, the focus, the pain. Every Life is going to happen regardless, right, guys? So in the end, you have to focus on what you don't see, which is what's beneath the surface, which is what is working in our subconscious, which is what is working in our mind Bam. in order to persevere and make things happen. That's really the key, you guys. Okay? Awesome. So, we're going to continue to have fun in this whole journey. That's really, for Trina and I, that's really the, the, the 
litmus test is, are we having fun? Because if we're not having fun, then why are we doing it? Some people we find stress themselves out right. over building a, a business right. when you should be passionate about your reason why. And you need to be modeling that by example to yourself first and foremost and believing in yourself, knowing that you deserve it, knowing that, you know, you're great enough. And that's really the key. Mm -hmm. Secrets of the millionaire mind. That's right. We got this. So we're super excited to see what you guys do this next week. Um, how many connections, how many contacts you made, how many times you pick up the phone to make the connections, and how many new appointments you set to show the plan. So, and that is what we're going to talk a little bit about next week is showing the plan. Showing the plan. Because if you, if you can learn to show the plan, you are never, ever, ever dependent upon anybody else for your success. Never. Show them the plan. You will sell a product. You will sell a ticket. They will lead you to the people or they won't. But the reality is, is we need to up that. If I look at even our team, if I look at our team's checklist, you guys, and you should be having a meeting with your team outside of this fast track, either weekly or every two weeks or something. You got to be coaching and giving some advice. But again, you have to be leading by example if you are a captain as well. All right. But in the end, some of the coaching that I'm already looking at, you guys, is number one, turn in your checklist. Finish the race. Mm -hmm. Be all in on your reason why. Here we are going into our fourth week of the fast track. And this is about the time that people start to second guess. Mm. Is this really working for me? And, and, and that it's not up for debate. You can look at the results of everybody in the fast track who is doing the work and the results are off the hook incredible. So it's not up for debate whether it's working for a ton of people or not. The only question is, will you work for you yeah. in order to produce those results for you? And you're the only one who gets to choose. But if you're making the calls, I want to know how many appointments you're setting. And if you're making 10, 15 calls, you guys, and you're not setting like three or four appointments, I'm going to like, okay, what are we saying? What are we doing? What, you know, you definitely want to listen to lose the scripts, make the call. See, yeah. we have to diagnose what is working and what is not working. Some of it could be the wrong people. Some of it could be you and the energy you're bringing to the table. Again, it's like, are you smiling? Are you doing what Trinity said? Are you nodding your head? Even if it's on the phone, you need to be smiling. They can you tell. You your head. You need to bring some energy to that call. Yep. Why? Because they could be having a bad day right now. If you just bring a dull energy yep. to that call and I'm just reading something to someone, it's like, would you do me a favor? Like, <laughs> they can tell the difference between somebody who knows what they're doing and they're all in on it yep. emotionally and then therefore mentally, all right, and the person who's not. That people want to jump on board with somebody that is going somewhere. So you create the energy, you guys, you create your future, you get to customize it, and you get to choose. So we are so thankful that you guys joined us here tonight. Um, and, and uh, what, yeah. Yeah, um, Celtics, go <laughs> Celtics. Tonight, baby, this is a Celtics are going to be going to the championship as of tonight. Okay. I don't awesome. even know what the score is. doesn't really matter. I just know they are. I can speak it into existence. Happy Memorial Day, and we are so glad that you guys joined us today. Have a great week. Have an amazing week, and we can't wait to see your numbers. All right, don't give up on you. You guys got this. You got this. Love you guys.